The $2.1 billion B-2 Spirit had never been detected by enemy radar in 30 years of service, until Captain Sarah Mitchell had to do the impossible over North Korean airspace. But what happened next would force her to break every stealth protocol ever written and turn the world's most invisible aircraft into the most visible target in the sky. Where are you watching this from? Tell us in the comments. And if you have stealth aircraft stories, let's chat below. Captain Sarah Mitchell stood in the classified briefing room at Whiteman Air Force Base, Missouri, at 0347 hours on a Wednesday morning in February. The windowless, soundproof room contained only eight people with the highest security clearances in the United States Air Force. Captain Mitchell, Colonel James Hartford began, sliding a crimson folder across the reinforced steel table. You've been selected for Operation Ghostwalker. This is a single-pilot deep reconnaissance mission over the Korean Peninsula. Sarah opened the folder with steady hands. Inside were satellite images of a concrete facility, 31 miles northeast of Pyongyang, a complex that had appeared seemingly overnight six weeks ago. Intelligence suggested it housed advanced radar technology, but confirmation required close-range reconnaissance. Sir, Sarah said, studying the target coordinates, the B-2's stealth profile makes this a standard penetration mission. Ghost mode should keep us completely invisible. Colonel Hartford's expression darkened. Captain, there's a complication. Our signals intelligence intercepted communications about something called Phantom Hunter, new counter-stealth radar technology. We don't know its capabilities or operational status. Sarah felt her pulse quicken. The B-2 Spirit stealth technology relied on radar-absorbing materials, angular surfaces that scattered electromagnetic waves, and electronic countermeasures. If North Korea had developed effective counter-stealth radar, the $2.1 billion aircraft could become a $2.1 billion target. What's my contingency if the stealth systems are compromised? She asked. There isn't one. If you're detected over North Korean airspace, you're 847 miles from friendly territory. The B-2 has no air-to-air -air combat capability and limited defensive systems. Major Rebecca Torres, the mission intelligence officer, leaned forward. Captain, this facility appeared after North Korea claimed to have solved the invisibility problem. We need to know if they can actually see our stealth aircraft. Three hours later, Sarah performed her pre-flight inspection of Spirit of Texas, her assigned B-2. The aircraft looked like a visitor from another world, a flying wing with no vertical surfaces, painted in radar-absorbing gray that seemed to bend light around its edges. She ran her hands along the leading edge, checking for any imperfections in the stealth coating. A scratch as small as a quarter could increase the aircraft's radar signature by 300%. Everything checks out, Captain, her crew chief, Technical Sergeant Maria Santos, reported. All stealth systems are operational. Ghost Mode is ready for activation. Ghost Mode was the B-2's most classified capability, a combination of electronic warfare, radar jamming, and signature management that made the aircraft virtually undetectable. Only 14 pilots in the Air Force were qualified to operate it. At 0847 hours, Sarah taxied Spirit of Texas onto runway 01. The massive aircraft moved with surprising grace, its engines producing a whisper-quiet hum that was barely barely audible even from the control tower. Ghostwalker, you are cleared for takeoff, came the transmission from the tower. Sarah advanced the throttle smoothly. The B-2 accelerated down the runway and lifted off with the silence of a giant owl. Within minutes, she was climbing through 35,000 feet, heading northwest toward the Pacific. The flight to North Korean airspace took 8 hours and 23 minutes. Sarah flew in complete radio silence, navigating by GPS and inertial guidance systems. The B-2's stealth profile meant no traditional navigation aids. Any electronic emission could compromise her position. At 1634 hours, Sarah crossed into North Korean airspace at 44,000 feet. Her radar warning receiver remained completely silent. No enemy radar was painting the aircraft. So far, so good, she whispered, adjusting course toward the target facility. The B-2's synthetic aperture radar began mapping the ground below, creating high-resolution images of the suspected counter-stealth facility. Sarah could see concrete buildings, massive dish antennas, and what appeared to be underground installations with heavily shielded entrances. But as she completed her reconnaissance run and turned south toward friendly airspace, her worst nightmare materialized on her displays. Beep! 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 Her radar warning receiver exploded with alerts. Multiple radar systems were painting the B-2 from five different directions. 
The displays showed search radars, tracking radars, and fire control radars, all maintaining solid locks on her aircraft. Impossible, Sarah breathed. The B-2's radar cross-section was smaller than a large bird. How were they tracking her so effectively? Her threat display showed surface-to-air missile sites activating across a 200-mile radius. She had perhaps two minutes before the first missiles launched. Sarah's training took over. She activated every electronic countermeasure the B-2 possessed, radar jammers, chaff dispensers, and infrared decoys. But the enemy radars maintained their locks with disturbing precision. Then, she realized the truth. The North Koreans weren't tracking her radar signature, they were tracking her heat signature. The facility's Phantom Hunter system was using infrared technology combined with advanced processing to detect the B-2's thermal footprint against the cold upper atmosphere. Her electronic warfare officer training kicked in. If they were tracking heat, she needed to eliminate her thermal signature, but that would require shutting down systems that kept the aircraft flyable. Time to get creative, Sarah muttered, beginning a series of maneuvers no B-2 pilot had ever attempted in hostile airspace. She reduced power to minimum sustainable thrust, allowing the aircraft to enter a controlled descent that would mask her engine's heat signature behind the thermal layer at 25,000 feet. Then, she activated the B-2's environmental control system in reverse, using it to cool the aircraft's external surfaces. The maneuver was working, but it was also making the B-2 nearly impossible to control. At reduced power, and with environmental systems operating beyond design parameters, she was flying a $2.1 billion glider through some of the most dangerous airspace on Earth. Her radar warning receiver began to show confusion among the enemy tracking systems. The solid locks were becoming intermittent as her thermal signature faded below the detection threshold. But her fuel consumption during the thermal masking maneuver had been enormous. She was now running critically low on fuel, with 623 miles still to fly to reach friendly airspace. Sarah faced an impossible choice, restore full power and become visible to enemy radar, or continue the thermal masking and risk running out of fuel over the Sea of Japan. She chose a third option that combined everything she knew about the B-2's capabilities. Sarah began flying a wave-skimming pattern, using the terrain of the Korean Peninsula to mask her radar signature while carefully managing her thermal footprint. She flew through mountain valleys at 500 feet above ground level, an altitude where the B-2's stealth technology was most effective, but where a single navigation error would be fatal. The technique worked. Her radar warning receiver showed the enemy tracking systems losing contact as she used the mountainous terrain to break up their radar coverage. But flying a stealth bomber through mountain valleys in hostile territory required navigation precision that pushed both aircraft and pilot to their absolute limits. She was threading a $2.1 billion needle through North Korean airspace at 400 knots. 27 minutes later, Sarah crossed into international airspace over the Sea of Japan. Her fuel gauges showed 1,847 pounds remaining, enough for approximately 12 more minutes of flight. Pacific Control, this is Ghost Walker, requesting immediate priority landing at Osun Air Base, fuel emergency. Ghost Walker, Pacific Control, you are cleared for direct approach Osun, emergency services standing by. Sarah landed Spirit of Texas at Osun Air Base, with 276 pounds of fuel remaining, less than 5 minutes of flight time. As she shut down the engines, she realized she had just proven that the B-2 Spirit could penetrate the most advanced counter-stealth defenses on Earth, but only by using the aircraft in ways its designers never intended. Colonel Hartford was waiting in the debriefing room when Sarah arrived two hours later. His expression was grim but impressed. Captain Mitchell, your mission report indicates you encountered active counter-stealth radar that successfully tracked the B-2. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. The North Koreans have developed infrared-based tracking that can detect our thermal signature. Traditional stealth technology isn't enough anymore. How did you evade their systems? Thermal masking combined with terrain-following flight, sir. I essentially turned the B-2 into a cold, low-flying target that their systems couldn't process effectively. Hartford leaned back in his chair. Do you realize you just flew a B-2 Spirit through mountain valleys at 500 feet above ground level? Yes, sir. It was the only way to complete the mission and return with actionable intelligence. Captain, you've just identified a critical vulnerability in our stealth aircraft and developed countermeasures that will reshape how we operate the B-2 fleet. Your flight path data will be classified and studied by every stealth aircraft program in the Air Force. Three weeks later, Sarah found herself at the Pentagon, briefing senior Air Force leadership on her North Korean mission and the thermal masking techniques she had developed. Ladies and gentlemen, 
General Patricia Hayes, the Air Force Chief of Staff, announced to the room of colonels and generals, Captain Mitchell has demonstrated that our adversaries are developing technologies specifically designed to defeat our stealth capabilities, but she's also proven that innovative piloting can overcome these challenges. Sarah stood before the most senior leadership in the Air Force, explaining how she had flown the world's most advanced stealth bomber, like a World World War II fighter aircraft to evade enemy detection. The B-2's stealth technology remains effective, she concluded, but only if we're willing to use the aircraft beyond its designed operational parameters when facing advanced counter-stealth systems. General Hayes nodded approvingly. Captain, your techniques will be incorporated into B-2 training programs immediately. You've proven that stealth isn't just about technology. It's about the pilot's ability to adapt when that technology is challenged. Six months later, every B-2 pilot in the Air Force had trained in Sarah's thermal masking and terrain-following techniques. The methods she developed over North Korean airspace became standard procedures for operations in contested environments. During the annual B-2 symposium at Whiteman Air Force Base, Sarah was asked to address the assembled pilots about her mission. The B-2 Spirit is the most advanced aircraft ever built, she told them. But advanced technology means nothing if we're not willing to push beyond the normal operating envelope when the mission demands it. A young lieutenant raised his hand. Ma'am, weren't you concerned about damaging a $2.1 billion aircraft with those maneuvers? Sarah smiled. Lieutenant, the aircraft's value is meaningless if it can't complete its mission. Sometimes preserving the machine means using it in ways that might seem dangerous, but that's why we train for situations that push the limits. Colonel Hartford, who had been promoted to wing commander, concluded the symposium with a reflection on Sarah's mission. Captain Mitchell proved that our most sophisticated weapon systems are only as good as the pilots who operate them. When facing unexpected threats, innovation and adaptability matter more than following standard procedures. But for Sarah, the most important lesson wasn't about stealth technology or advanced tactics. It was about understanding that excellence in military aviation meant being willing to use every capability of your aircraft when lives and national security were at stake. The B-2 Spirit remained the world's most advanced stealth bomber, but Sarah's mission had proven that even the most invisible aircraft could be seen and that the best pilots were those who could disappear again when visibility meant vulnerability. Sometimes the most important military innovations come not from engineering advances, but from pilots willing to push aircraft beyond their designed limits when the mission requires it. Sarah's thermal masking techniques had emerged from necessity over North Korean airspace, but they became essential capabilities for the entire B-2 fleet. Captain Sarah Mitchell had demonstrated that stealth wasn't just about technology. It was about the human ability to adapt, innovate, and succeed when standard procedures weren't enough to bring everyone home safely.